Today I'm going to share how I take care of my cameras as well as my lenses. So get out some gear, open up that cleaning kit, and let's get busy. What's up everybody? It's your girl Daisy, the hostess with the mostest, and welcome back to my channel. So yeah guys, so if you watched that Panasonic GH6 video that I did, and thank you so much for all your comments and your feedback, well, you know, it looks like I wasn't the only one that was a little disappointed in the GH6, and again, it wasn't because of the specs. On paper, they're fabulous. It's possibly the best Micro Four Thirds that's ever roamed around here, right? But truth be told, a lot of Panasonic users, especially GH5 users, from what I read in the comments and all around YouTube, they really weren't, you know, so impressed, not so much with the specs. They wanted an autofocusing system that's consistent. And Panasonic stuck with the depth from the focus, and that's not going to work for me. Now, the camera that I told you I was interested in was the OM-1. And I did pull the trigger on it after doing some homework. I traded the G95 and the OM Digital M2, packed everything up. Here she is right here, $900. I came out of pocket $0 for this like new GH5. Not only that, but MPB sent me a couple of hundred bucks back in exchange for the two cameras. Can't go wrong. That money, I went ahead and put it now towards the OM-1, right? The gist of this video is that when you take care of your gear, your gear is gonna take care of you. The first camera that I owned was the SL2. This thing was like the creme de la creme around here when it first launched. What I do and what I've learned throughout all of my camera systems is you always protect the sensor. Now, I know that there's a few channels that show you how to clean your sensor if it gets dirty. I wouldn't do that. I would, if, if it, the time came for my sensor to be cleaned, I would send it out professionally. But if it's not something that you feel you can do, then I'll leave the link down below. Go check him out. But anyway, because I follow the good practices that I'm about to show you, I've never had to clean a sensor professionally with any of my camera systems. The way you know if your sensor is dirty is if you take pictures and then you go put them on your computer or your big screen or whatever, and you see spots or little you know dots and stuff on your pictures, then most likely your sensor's got something on there. And at that point, you gotta decide whether you're gonna tackle it yourself or send it out. So let's start with good practices. One of the first techniques that I learned early on was how to position my camera when changing a lens. Camera 101, is always protect your sensor. Very important. You don't want dust or particles or anything getting inside, inside the camera or inside the sensor or on the sensor. So I learned early on that you should always hold your camera down, right, in the down position. I always have the lens that's going on the camera ready to go with the cap gently screwed off. Then I go ahead and I remove the cap. There's times when I'll take the blower and just do something like this. Then I take the cap off the lens. Then I go ahead and start turning it just ever so little so that I can actually see what the heck I'm doing. And now my lens is on and I expose it in very short time to whatever elements are out there. Now I rarely take my better systems, my cameras to the beach. If you know, you're know you out there and it's the elements and sometimes you go out and it could start raining or pouring or whatever, you guys know peak design, right? Besides the little things that you stick on your cameras, you know, like these thingamajigs, I buy a lot of their stuff, their camera straps, uh, their camera bag. They make some really dope products and I always pick up a few of these. This is their weatherproof camera shell. And this one is, because most of my cameras are about a small, so it depends on your rig. But this thing, when I attach my Peak Design, you know, camera strap, and I protect, you know, the camera. The, this, this, this particular one right here, 
uh, can house the camera and my lens. So again, if you're gonna be out there, make sure that you've got, you know, one of these uh, camera shells, they're waterproof, but I trust them. And this is always, I always have this in my camera bag in case one day you're out there and it looks like it's gonna pour and you know, you got your camera cause you don't wanna miss a shot. Yeah, protect your camera from rain, water, any of the elements. So Peak Design is also a great way to go. For the front of my, uh, lenses um i'm not real big on the on the filters but they come in handy when you want to protect the front element of your glass as you know the front element of the glass depending on how much you spend on the lenses you know they can be pricey and irregardless whatever your budget is you want to protect the lenses one of the first things that i learned again was to pick up the uv filter i've been using tiffin for many years, this one right here is for my 67 filter size, for my 67 lenses. The way you can tell what uh, filter size, you just look on the inside cap, and here you'll have a number. This is the cap for the 15 to 35, and this is big, this is an 82. For this one, I have these. I, I mean, these up a little bit on the pricey side, but remember, if you're trying to protect a $2,200 lens with a you know $10 UV filter, it sort of like doesn't make any sense, so don't go cheap. Because you know what I always say, cheap is cheap, right? Next good practice, the lens hood. A lot of the uh, lens manufacturers actually throw in the lens hoods. Besides protecting, you know, the lens from flare, this is a great way to protect the lens from bumps, you know, if you bump it up against something or whatever, there's times that you can be shooting. I've actually shot here in my home and I'm trying to take a shot and I've bumped into stuff. So the lens hoods are great. There's a company that I use, Altura, makes a uh, rubberized. Let me get it for you guys. Uh, it's like a collapsible rubber lens hood, right? And falls into like three different positions. And when you put it on your lens, right? Let me just show you guys. It pops up like this. Isn't this great? And this is nice. It goes right on that element and then it's like a bounce. Like trust and believe, nothing's getting through to your lens with this thing. Let's move on to cleaning the camera. You probably own one of these cleaning kits. I've been using Altura for years. This thing came fully loaded. It's my favorite. It came with everything I need, the brush, the blower, tissue paper, Q-tip swabs to get inside the EVF, lens brush, cleaning solution, everything I need to keep my gear looking good. Here's a few other ones that I've gotten over the years. Kawa makes a nice one. And the other company too that's pretty good and loads you up is Pro Optic. And it also comes in a little case like this. So I've got like, believe you me, I've got about four or five of these things over the years. And the one that has lasted, and I don't even have to open these other ones, is this Altura kit. And a lot of this stuff you just use very sparingly. You know, the solution, if you take care of your stuff, you're not going to need bottles of this. And look at, and, and I got camera gear here. And I've been using this same stuff here for over five years. They give you the microfiber cloth, everything that you need to keep your cameras looking good. Okay, so first I start by picking up the air blower, right, and blowing everything off my camera, right? You can see I go around the whole thing like this, get in all those little, you know, inside the little nooks and crannies all over. I flip open the the LCD, get in there, the EVF. You know, the EVF thing, if you jiggle it a little bit, that pops out and you can really get in there good. So, you know, you can take that off very carefully, clean that out, blow everything out. You wanna make sure that there aren't any anything that can scratch any of the glass elements, whether it's the lens, the LCD screen, the EVF. You wanna make damn straight sure right? That everything is blown the hell out of there before you start using the solution or, you know, your microfiber cloth. So once I've blown everything the hell off it, right? Then I go ahead and put it down and I take my brush from my kit, right? And the Arturo kit comes with two brushes. I usually use this soft one to like just gently brush around Right, so I take this and real carefully, right, very gently, I start brushing all around to get, get everything off, right? Open this back up again 
and get everything out of there, right? Very softly, right? This is a very soft brush that I go ahead and brush everything in, right? Brush everything right out of there, right? Then in case I get like, you know, fingerprints and smudges and things like that, then I reach for the solution, right? And never spray this on the camera. I always go ahead and spray it on the microfiber cloth, right? And I just do something like this. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, right? And then I lay the LCD screen flat against the camera. And then very gently, I start wiping it down. I right? hope you guys can see that. Let me show you this way. I just wipe everything down. And my LCDs are always nice and, you know, no fingerprints. You know, sometimes, you know, you get, uh, you know, little particles and crap that get on there. And basically, I take it around like that. Okay, so once I've done, you know, the microfiber cloth and I get all in there, right? If your EVF needs a little help, again, you could always jiggle it and take it off, right? And then that's where the Q-tip swabs come in. Again, spray on the Q-tip swab, not on the damn camera. So I just take a little bit and I just spray like that, right? Make it a little bit damp. You don't, like I said, you don't need tons. And then I lift the camera back up again and very gently go around in a circular motion like that. All right, I hope you guys can see it. Then I take the dry side, do that, All right? Get in there really good. Make sure the EVF is nice and clean, right? I then take the little rubbery part of the retractable pen again and get in there, right? I blow it in so it's nice and dry. You know, this, blow, this blower thing, trust me, if you use this on a consistent basis, your cameras are going to love it. They, you know, you're not going to have any issues with, you know, your cameras being having to be sent out uh, for professional cleaning. And when it's time to like upgrade to something new, your cameras are looking pristine. So like I said, I've, I've been using this thing here like this for years. Okay, so once I'm done with the smudges, and as you can see, everything looks good. My little cameras are good. And again, I use this for all of my systems, right? Whether it's the you know GH5, whether the GH5, since I just got it the other day, that thing got a nice sweet, it, was, it came pretty good done, but I cleaned it, checked everything out, right? So she's ready to go. Uh, Sony gets tender loving care as well, the A7S III. So does the Canon, right? So I tend to keep my cameras looking pretty sharp. But anyway, so that's that for the camera, right? So now that I've got my camera looking good, let's work on the lenses. So when it comes to my lenses, it's more or less like the same practice. You wanna make sure that first, uh, right now I'm holding the RF 35, and as you can see, I already have my JV, my JJC UV filter on here, right? I always start, same thing, blowing everything the heck off there, right? Because you basically don't want anything, right, on the glass. I sometimes remove this part as well, right? And again, like this, just blow it. I very rarely have to do anything on this part of the lens, trust and believe, right? Because you shouldn't be touching that at all, right? I put the cap back on very gently. Let me see if I can do this. You know, these new Canon caps sort of like suck. But anyway, so there it is, right? And once I blow everything in really, really good, uh, again, my JJC is already on there. I gently unscrew it. Sort of like so. Hopefully you guys can see that. Place it down gently. And then in here, I do the same thing. Blow it all the way out, get all of those nooks and crannies, right? Give it a good blast, right? These things are great. This particular one is fantastic. I can probably blow dry my hair with this thing, but yeah. Go ahead and blow it out. And then with the brush that's on the retractable side, the very soft one, then occasionally I just may like do this very gently if I think that it needs it. Technically speaking, if you do this right, 
You're not going to have to mess with that glass element at all, right? If it looks like there's maybe like a little smudge or something on there, I may gently use the Q-tip thing again, again wet, and just like try to rub it really good. But you technically don't want to touch anything around here, especially because our hands are greasy, you know, they, you know, smudgy, you know, sweat. You know, you want to keep this as clean and pristine. And then once that's done, I give the the glass element, right, the JJC, I give this like a good blast as well, right? And then I can start putting this back on my glass, on my uh, lens. And I screw it back in there like so. All right, get it in there real good. All right, do the little brush thing again. There, and this is the this is the element you know for the for the filter for the UV filter and that's it now I can go ahead and put my and and sometimes people forget to uh, do the lens cap guys you know the lens cap sometimes gets dusty too so give that a good blast as well you know get all in there and that's how I take care of my uh, my glass right and then I always check it out to make sure that it looks good so far so good if i see like a little speck of something in there that like worries me yeah no that's just a glare from the light okay this is cool and then i just put my cap back on and my lens is you know ready for whenever i need to like snap it up in there on the um now because this is rf so this one goes with the r but you get the gist right same thing for air for all my other lenses right take care of your lenses they'll take care of you and uh, you know, always have them ready to go. Okay guys, so now let's talk storage, where you store your gear, which is very important, right? I tend to leave my cameras here in New York. I don't really have to worry so much about heat and humidity, except in the summer months, and by then the air conditioners are up and running. And, you know, in the summer, you don't wanna keep your cameras in a dark closet where there's no air circulating, because you know, mold, tends and moisture tends to grow in dark spaces. For me, I've always kept my cameras, all of them, out here, right? Because as you can see, if you watch my videos, you know that I got all my cameras out here, air circulates, and you know, I don't have a problem. You know, this, this up here every couple of, you know, maybe once a week, when I dust my room, I bring them down, dust all my cabinets up again and everything, and everything is ready to go. Another good thing where I store my lenses is in these neoprene lens uh, holders. These are great. These are also Altura. You can get them as big as this. So if you've got, you know, a big zoom lens or whatever it is, these things are great. They have like a, like a velvet fur on the inside and you drop your lenses in there nice and smooth. They come with little clips, so, you know, in case you wanna clip it outside of a bag or whatever, right? I mean, I don't know why, how anybody would clip this thing. I never, you know, I don't, I don't really have big focal range lenses. I stop at like 105, but yeah, they come in all different sizes and they protect the lens. When you have to store your lenses, I keep mine inside my armoire. I'll show you that in a minute with some B-roll that I took. But yeah, these, these things are great. Like this is the one that I got. Canon actually threw one in with a 15 to 35. Thank you, Canon. Uh, this one I got from Focus, right? So what lens is in here? This one I keep the uh, the 18, this is the 18 to 55, which goes with the SL2, right? So I always got plenty of these. And once I'm done with my lenses, you know, you squeeze this thing here. Again, they all come with these little clips. Um, and they're cute because if you're only going out with you, the two lenses, you can clip one on a belt or on a camera bag and you're ready to rock and roll, switch out a lens, drop the next one in here. As long as you keep them in a place where, you know, there's not going to be like moisture and they're not going to be like in a damp humidity type of a room. And my I'll show you my cabinet in a minute. I keep everything in there, my boxes, everything ready to go, nice and clean. So the day that I want to trade up to get something new, my stuff is ready to go. I put this in the box, ship it, and get a couple of dollars back for the next new lens or the next new camera. Another good company, magicfiber.com, right? They make these lens bags 
They're made out of microfiber, right? Check this out. And not only do you can you store your lens in here, let me try to find a tiny one because this is the small one. These come in all sizes as well. Let me see if the 35 is going to fit in there. Yeah, it sure does. And what's great about this is that besides it, like keeping your lens nice and safe, right? And then this flips open. You can also use the microfiber cloth in case in a pinch you have to clean something off. These are fantastic. Basically speaking, this is how I store my lenses because, you know, you spend a lot of primo bucks on them and you must take care of your gear. Because again, if you take care of your gear, your gear is going to take care of you. And when it's time to move on, you can, you know, trade up and your stuff is looking pretty damn good. Now, when I store my cameras and my lenses, whether it's in my camera bag or my closet or even here, uh, I picked up and I learned this trick from one of the gurus. You know the sachet, uh, the silicone gels? The, the silica gels, you know how you always get them like when you buy electronics or they put them in like when you buy shoes and you see those little packs in your shoes or in your boxes? Yeah, these things absorb moisture and they're fantastic. I always throw a few of them in my camera bag, especially if I'm going to go out on the road hitting, you know, humid weather, if I'm in Puerto Rico, if I'm in Mexico, wherever there's humidity, yeah, throw a few of these in. I also put them in my closet in the summer. I drop them around here, and these work great. Another good thing that works great, and I don't have one to show you guys. I don't know if you've ever been to Home Depot and they sell that thing that's called RID, and it absorbs the water in the air. I sometimes drop two of them down here if it's gonna be really hot and humid, and you'll see the bag fill up with the moisture that it, it absorbs. You know, you gotta be careful with moisture, humidity, things like that. They don't play nice with your camera gear, so I always buy these. You could get them really cheap. I think this entire bag, how many came in here? This was 50 from Amazon. I think I paid like nine bucks for this entire bag. And lastly, it's your camera bag. Now, I know people that go out on a shoot or a wedding or whatever, whatever, whatever they're doing with their gear for the day. Their gear sits in the bag for weeks, if not months. I don't do that. I know that sometimes we come back tired from a whole day's worth of adventure. Depending on what time I get back, I open up my caddy, bring out my camera, check that out, make sure that you know, it looks good, that I don't have to you know blast it with anything. I survey inside the bag. I have a small portable vacuum cleaner, vacuum it all up. If I'm coming back from, from whatever trip I did, within a day, I remove everything from my camera bag and basically speaking, get everything ready to go my camera bag is nice and clean so the next time I go out I don't got to worry about it I just put in the new camera that I'm taking whatever lenses and I'm ready to rock and roll okay guys so I think I covered everything right how to change your lenses how to hold the camera storage solutions where I keep my cameras you know that way they're not in a dark closet somewhere you know good airflow is important the cleaning kits right if you've got one and I'm not the only one that's walking around with about five or six of these things you know use them this uh, blower thing is like the best thing right you blast everything off here trust and believe you use this consistently you, you know your, your stuff's going to be looking pretty pretty good for a long time to come. So as usual, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel down below. As soon as I get the OM-1, I'll come back and run a video on that. As soon as I figure out this GH5, I'll come back for that. And remember that I'm going to be in Mexico uh, doing up uh, Playa del Carmen, but big. So you wanna subscribe and check out those videos. As you know, those are my travel videos. So I want you guys to uh, chime in. So take care, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Ciao.